and welcome to 3 Minute Histology with Jamie Chapman. Today we're going to be looking at the submandibular salivary gland. Uh, it's one of the three paired major salivary glands of the oral cavity, the other two being the parotid and the sublingual salivary gland. Um, so let's start our three minutes. So one thing that really uh, differentiates the submandibular salivary gland from the parotid and the sublingual salivary gland is its composition of asini. Now in the submandibular salivary gland, um, there are 80% serous asini and only 20% mucous asini. So it's a mixed gland. It contains both mucous and serous asini with a predominance of serous asini. And that's what accounts for this largely basophilic staining associated with this gland. You can actually see it's divided up into lobules, like we were talking about uh, with the parotid salivary gland. Now, it's an exocrine gland, so it uses ducts to release its secretions onto the surface of the epithelium from which it was derived. So, therefore, we're talking about the oral cavity. And within these lobules, uh, we actually have um, intralobular ducts. And there are um, two types. You can either find intercalated ducts or striated ducts. Intercalated drain the asini that then drains into the striated and then they move into the larger ducts which we find in the connective tissue such as the interlobar ducts, uh, interlobular ducts and the lobar ducts. Just ignore the shape of that one there. So let's have a look at this uh, in a little bit more detail. We can see some adipose sort of scattered around, but we can see that the preponderance of this asini are actually uh, serous asini. So we've got our rings of cells with our round basally located nucleus, basal basophilia associated with the localization of rough endoplasmic reticulum um, at the base of the cell, producing the enzymes which is forming the, the uh, major part of the secretion of the submandibular. Then we've got this pale acidophilic uh, structure with the lumen here. These are our ducts. So these are our intralobular ducts draining all of the secretions from our glands. The mucus asini, however, are these ones here. You can actually see they're quite pale staining. Mucus, because it's a very uh, glycosylated glycoprotein, that means it's got lots of sugars on its outside, hides its protein backbone from the staining of eosin. So it, it tends not to stain with um, our stains very well. And so the nuclei associated with the mucus uh, secreting cells are very flattened, basally located, and that's really classic of um, these mucus asini. One thing you will find with uh, mixed glands that have both mucus and serous is that if the serous are associated with the mucus glands, we often get these little caps of cells, which we call a serous demiloon, sort of half moon shape of serous cells overlying a mucus asinus. So you can see those if you sort of zoom around and able to find them. So here we've got our ducts so leading down into striated ducts. Again, striations down the bottom here indicating this is a striated duct. Um, and if you want more information about the striated duct, please see the video on the parotid salivary gland. So that's the submandibular in three minutes. Um, I hope you found that useful.